According to statistics, disposable diapers are the third most common household item found in landfills. And with every single child using over 6,000 of them in the first two years of their life, it's not hard to see why they are so common. After years upon years of development, we've perfected the formula for making the ideal diaper. What does making the ideal diaper look like? Well, let's find out. The Gathering of Materials Now, while most of us are familiar with the fabric-like outer surface of diapers, the main material used in their construction is actually a mixture of wood pulp and cotton wool. This pulp is used by processing pine wood, much like how paper pulp is made, and it is mixed with a specified quantity of cotton to create a soft, lightweight, and most importantly, very dry material that'll make up the cushion-like interior of the diaper. And to do that, these materials once combined are brought onto the first manufacturing step, the mixing of the core. Here, the core mixture is first mixed using industrial mixers, and then it is rolled out in the form of one long sheet that unwinds into another chamber where it is combined with the first of two chemical treatments, a hyperabsorbent polymer. This chemical not only helps hold the cotton and pulp together, but also increases the water holding capacity of the core by a considerable amount. As a result, while the pulp mixture unwinds into a container, the chemical polymer is also added in the form of granules. And besides that, some sprinklers also spray some water into the mix, which gets rid of any static electricity produced by the rubbing of cotton and helps the chemical dissolve and absorb onto the surface of the pulp. And once the core mixture is perfectly mixed, it is sent off to the next step, the forming of the pads. To turn this mixture into diapers, the material must be shaped into rectangular shapes that can be fitted inside said diapers. For this, the core mixture is sucked out by a vacuum into a rectangular chute that shapes into one long rectangular strip. This strip is then passed through two rollers that compress it into a solid material, which is then sent through a guillotine wheel that cuts the strip into individual diaper cores. Finally, the cores are once again passed through a pair of rollers known as a debulking station that compresses the fluffy core into a size small enough to comfortably fit a baby. Now, while the core is definitely absorbent, it is not enough on its own to absorb all the liquid that a diaper has to stop from leaking out. So, to accomplish that, the diaper needs a special water gel. The secret to success of the modern disposable diaper is not the material or the manufacturing, but the chemicals that are used to absorb water and stop it from disturbing the baby or its surroundings. This is usually some combination of sodium polyacrylate with other chemicals. And the reason that acrylate is used is because of its unique ability to turn liquid water into a solid gel. This means that whenever there is any liquid inside the diaper, it'll cause the sodium acrylate to absorb it and become a granulated gel, stopping any leaks and also preventing the baby from getting wet for long, something that can cause a lot of discomfort and even disease. These chemicals are actually constantly tested and improved upon. Here, you can see the research officer demonstrate the effectiveness of the gel. You see, the diaper on the left has no gel, and as a result, the blue liquid takes a long time to absorb. By comparison, the one on the right absorbs all the liquid in a fraction of the time. But that's not all, as when the diapers are pressed with a paper towel, the non-gel diaper comes out to be very wet, while the one with the gel doesn't even make a mark. This helps in baby comfort, parenting convenience, and prevention of leakages, all because of one simple chemical. Now, coming back to the process of manufacturing, this polymer is added in the form of tiny granules between two cotton pulp cores. As a result, the cores can keep the baby comfortable and help the layer of polymer get the liquid evenly. Once these chemicals are packaged between the pulp, all that's left is to add the plastic and fabric bits that hold the diaper together. The outer layer. Now, the completed cores are brought onto the next section where a completely watertight layer of plastic is added to their outer side to prevent any remaining chance of seepage or wetness. While this is happening on one side, 
another station assembles the inner and outer sides of the diaper. This is done by combining and sewing together a few layers of synthetic fiber that give the baby the most comfortable experience possible. And this brings us to the last and most complicated part of the manufacturing process, final layering. Here, the bottom layer of the plastic and fabric is layered with another watertight material similar to Gore-Tex, and then the cores from earlier are arranged onto this long sheet. Added above these is a super soft layer of absorbent fabric that will make the inside of the diaper. And then this whole package is sealed using hot adhesives forming one long layer of diapers. But that's not all, as at the same time, another machine attaches elastic bands to the top and the bottom end of the diaper to ensure that the diaper stays attached to the baby while another machine adds some extra fabric to the outside that'll make up the diaper's cuffs. Finally, a cylinder attaches another set of elastic bands and adhesive strips to the sides of the diaper to allow parents to easily attach it to the baby. After which, all that's left is to cut the leg indentations into the surrounding fabric. This process is extremely crucial, and so it's controlled by a computer that makes sure that the die cuts the fabric at exactly the right spot so no faulty diapers are made. But since the process is so high speed, a few diapers in every batch do end up with some cutting mistakes. But luckily, the computer also monitors each cut diaper and removes all the faulty ones before they can be shipped off. And once all that's done, the diapers are all but ready to reach customers, which means that the next step and last one is the process of packaging. Now, unlike a lot of other things that can just bundle stuff up and package, diapers actually require a few tiny tweaks to the packaging process, all because of one thing, air. You see, since they're made up of cotton and soft pulp, the diapers take up more space than they should. So once the diapers are made, they have to be squeezed to remove any errant air inside them. But before that, the diapers are all first separated and then folded by an automatic machine, the same machine that then sends these folded diapers down to a carousel that counts the numbers of diapers as they come. From there, finger paddles separate individual diapers that pass between two compressing rollers that remove the bulk of the air from each diaper. Then they're all collected and put into set batches of a specified number. This entire batch is then once again compressed by two arms and sent toward where a vacuum apparatus opens a pre-made plastic bag into which the diapers are then tucked. And immediately afterwards, a pump removes all air from the package as a hot rod seals the plastic together, making sure that the diapers remain compressed until they reach the customer. From here, the individual packets are grouped into boxes and stored until shipping. And that's how this almost $71 billion a year industry works, providing billions of parents around the world with a ton of convenience and their children with comfortable sleep. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.